Okay, now we're going to get into uh, different functions. We all know that the int main, let me instantiate that int main over here. You know that this is a function on its own, okay? When the computer starts off, when it um, when the compiler first starts, it automatically jumps to the main function, okay? We can make several functions like this main function, which can be called by this main function inside of it. For example, I'm pretty sure I showed you this before, but uh, in my later videos, we have a function called int change. What this function does is when we call this function, since we instantiated this over here, since we have established this right over here, this is what the uh, return value returns as. So since it's int, we know that the return value returns an integer. Okay. So when we call this function with the main through the main, we're expecting a return value of an integer. Okay. For example, if we have uh, we have an int x. I'll int y and an int z, okay? And we want to send these uh, variables, since we have predefined variables, let's have like a 34, which just makes some predefined values, 45, and 67. If we want to send these to a uh, function called change, right, we can simply call it by putting the name of the function first and then sending the three values, so x, y, and z, simply like that. But in order for the compiler to recognize this as a function, we have to do something called casting. Okay, so casting, we have to take the uh, basically the header of this function, function change, copy it, and then paste it right above the main, um, outside of the main scope and outside of any other function scope. Okay, so we just put it right on top of here, right under the using namespace. It does not really matter where you put it, as long as it's not in the main scope or any other function scope. Okay, so inside the brackets, we're accepting these three values. We're accepting an int x value, so an int, we're going to do int x, int y, and int z, okay? By the way, just so you know, you can call these three variables anything you want. You can have an int r, an int i, and an int d, okay? However you send these values is how it's going to get picked up over here. So when you send the x, it'll get picked up as a R value, as the R value. So it's going to be replaced by the R value. It's going to make a copy of the X value and then it's going to stick it inside of R. Okay? It's going to make a copy of the Y value, it's going to stick it inside of I. Make a copy of the Z value, it's going to stick it inside of D. You could always keep it the same name. You can always do int X, int Y, Z, right? But I'm just showing you that it's just making a copy of the variable you send and renaming it. And in this case, it's the exact same name. Int x and x is the exact same name. Okay? Because you have an int x over here is 34 and you're just renaming it the same thing. You're making a copy and you're renaming it the same thing. So you understand that these aren't exact, these aren't the values. These are copies of whatever this value holds. That's what these are. The copies of whatever value it holds. And it's accepted by what order they're in. So x is always g, y is j, and z is uh, d. Okay? Um, in order for the uh, function to understand this, you have to also put this inside the uh, inside uh, the cast, okay? Just like we did over here. Do the same. The name is irrelevant in this case. Int g below is always an int. The name of it is irrelevant. The compiler just wants to know that I'm accepting an integer, another integer another integer. It wants to know that x is an integer, y is an integer, and z is an integer. So, once that's established, then you can start to deal with the variables inside of this function once these three are passed. So let's do something with this. Uh, we established that we have a g value, a j value, and a d value. Let's just print out um, what these values are, okay? So, g, j, and d. So I'm outputting the G value, the J value, and the D value with the space in between of each. Let's compile this. So as you see, we get 34, 45, and 67. G value is 34, J value is 45, and the uh, D value is 67. Next, let's try to return something. Here I put a default of 0 because I don't want it to return anything to the function. But say you want to return something. Say you want to get a sum. So if you do sum equal to 0 inside of the main function, and you wanted to take a sum inside of this. So you want to get the sum of g, j, and d. 
you can either do a return and then brackets you can do G plus J plus D or you can make a sum integer inside of here it's sum right you can make sum is equal to G plus J plus D and then return sum either way works as you said over here we casted it right we casted that this has an integer so it returns an integer it accepts three integers okay and it's called change this is what it accepts this is the type it returns okay so the type it accepts is three integers the type of return is an integer okay this is how we call it right but what if we wanted to get the return value inside of a variable that we called it so here's how to do it if we write sum is equal to um, change x y and z what will happen is the sum will be equal to this return value so we're returning sum and sum is equal to g plus j plus d so that means that sum over here is equal to sum over here okay pretty simple enough pretty simple enough just like this you can compare these two to each other int integer the name the name the three values accepting the three values it's sending it's that easy works hand in hand and then we can see out the sum value okay easy enough so let's just compile this quickly so we go we get the 34 45 67 and then the sum of it which is 46 